Thank you, Kirsten. I'm not going to talk about statistics at all. I'm going to talk about science and research and how you do experiments. Read this week's The Economist. What happens when you tell researchers what they're supposed to find? Even for the noblest of causes, uh, research can go out and find things we don't expect to find and that some people don't want to find, and you can modify the research to get the results. Uh, my thanks, before I forget, to Catherine Veillon Montfort, who was uh, the person who looked after this research project and did wonderful work keeping us in control and on time. Um, if you want to prove that translation is bad for language learning, that's easy. It was done in the United States in the 1980s. You go into a classroom of Spanish kids who are supposed to be learning English, Mexican kids. You translate everything. You are the teacher. You say it in English, then you say it in Spanish. This is translation. The kids are not stupid. They're not going to listen to the English. They're going to wait for the Spanish translation and learn no English. And that's how it was proved that translation is bad for language learning and it's not communicative. I'm serious. That is the kind of research on which the current prejudice against translation has been based. Now, we can conduct other kinds of research, but education as a whole, and language education especially, is a very, very complex process, and it's very difficult to isolate the variables. Um, I think people wanted us, perhaps even Katrin wanted us, to come out and say, translation is good for language learning. We can't say that. Oh, it would be a nice headline, but our, our findings are rather more statistical. It's something like this. We can put these different countries in the order in which they use translation in the classroom according to our data. Finland is at one end, Germany is at the other. Now, here's a very simple comparison you can do. There are several indices out there that judge how well students learn foreign languages in these countries. Take one of them, the EF Proficiency English um, Proficiency Index for English, as it happens. Look what we get. Number one is Finland. Not only do they use translation, but they learn languages very well. Therefore, translation is great for language learning in Finland where there are many other factors, of course. But, don't give up, Croatia also scores highly, and these other countries are not in the index, so, you know. But Croatia also scores very highly and is at number three, and that looks good. And down the bottom, poor old France and Spain, we're not doing very well at language learning, uh, which is indeed worrying, and we don't use translation very much in the classroom. We have rather retrograde communicative notions of language teaching. Now that is very suggestive. Is it definitive? No. But it should be enough to raise questions about what's happening. I think this use of research is not to prove that translation is good for this, it's good for that. We know it's not good for fluency, for example. That's very clear. We know it's not particularly good for learning to use the whole, you know, for becoming a pseudo L1 native speaker. But most language learners are not looking for that anyway these days. This, the research, this kind of analysis is there to raise problems, to point out anomalies. For example, what is Germany doing down there? Well, well, number two in proficiency and the last in translation. How can we explain that? The explanation is rather simple. If you go through our data, we got many people, people from Germany saying, we don't use translation anymore. We call it mediation, Sprachmittlung. And this concept of Sprachmittlung has taken over and the concept of translation has therefore become very narrow. So in fact what's happening here are changes in the translation concept. Other countries haven't undergone that terminological shift. Uh, Kirsten and I working in translation studies we're used to a very broad concept of translation. In the end perhaps the message, the first message from our research is that we have to talk about 
what translation is more and communicate, I hope, a wider concept of what can be done with it. Whether it be called translation or mediation, I don't really care. The second message that we're trying to get across through this kind of research is, uh, to paraphrase the great and much regretted John Lennon, all we're saying is give translation a chance. Thank you. <laughs>